Again, welcome to Normandy Park United Church of Christ. This day is Transfiguration Sunday and, of course, Valentine's Day. And we're blessed this morning to have our own Jane Armstrong be our guest preacher. Uh, before we formally begin worship and the liturgy, I invite you to enjoy this prelude that I thought appropriate for today, the overture to Romeo and Juliet. Thank you, Kevin. Um, our words of gathering this morning, it's nice that we can gather together because if we were in person, we would have been snowed out of the church. So <laughs> welcome to Zoom. Um, I'll read the light print and please join Vicki in the bold print. God of our hearts, here we are. We've come with thirsty hearts, praying that your words will satisfy us. We come with aching hearts, praying for good news to comfort us. We come with overfilling full, full hearts and praying for a chance to share your love. You who know our hearts and hear our prayers, be with us now in this hour of worship. Amen. Our first song is There is a Spirit of Love in This Place. Please join me in singing. Just as precious as the air, there's a spirit of love in this place. There's a spirit of love in this place. 
Just the chords and set these in this way. Moments of peace in this room. In God's tenderness is found peace that passes human bonds. There's the presence of peace in this room. Oh, hallelujah, sing hallelujah, we bless your holy name. Oh, hallelujah, sing hallelujah, there's a spirit of love in this place. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. And this is a prayer to take in a breath um, as we pray. With this breath, take in God's peace that passes all understanding. With this breath, take in God's hope for us, for our communities, for our country, for the whole world. With this breath, take in God's love that overcomes fear, hatred, uncertainty, this day and every day, day after day, night after night. Amen. Okay. Um, and Mace, go back to... If you can see me, um, this, there we go. There we go. Um, in in at the church website, there is a um, pattern and instructions for making Danish hearts. And of course, today's Valentine's Day, and um, sharing love is a big part of what for me this day is about. And Alice was kind enough to try out the pattern I'd found before I'd sent it in. And it's a little short. So if you can see mine to add a little bit onto it, if you go to do this yourself. Um, a friend and I did this with a different pattern a few years ago, and we were able to send them out in cards to friends and um, my mother's heritage is Danish. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking of her and I think bringing her back to my presence as, as I do it. Um, there are a couple of little tricks to doing this as well. And one is after you cut out your patterns, um, red and white are the colors of the Danish flag, but you can use any paper that's sort of a construction weight, high, uh, weight. Um, so that you can fold and weave. And one way to know if in the center, after you've cut it out, you're going to be measuring and cutting out whatever number of slits you want. Um, and a way to know if those slits are long enough is that the whole paper's got to weave through. So if you can do this, you've gone far enough with a little room to spare. If you can't, you need to cut a little bit farther. So, um, and if you look at Pinterest or some of those places online, you'll see a lot of varieties and people are actually able to get hearts formed in the center or they do multiple ones. Or last night I was taking Christmas cards from friends and cutting the rereading the messages that I'd received and, and making hearts with those. Um, and some don't turn out to show anything, but um, you don't know until you've woven it all together. So it's, I think um, in these times, we look at ways to bring people into our heart and to share our heart with others. And another, um, just as an aside for that, is 
last year there was a Facebook page called Hearts in the Window and up in Canada it started and it's gone international like groups the view from my window but people are putting hearts in their windows of different sizes um, to send a message to their friends as we isolate and their neighbors or just the stranger going by on the street that there's people are thinking of the first responders of each other and our communities. So whatever ways we can find to draw in our neighbors um, in a simple way or that says, we care, we know you're there, um, I think helps bring us this all together. So whatever our age, whatever our heritage and story that we reach out and remember those who we aren't with and um, those who are in our heart, amen. And Kevin's put a link in the chat for anyone who'd like to go to the um, pattern that's there. The other little secret is be sure you do each piece, get them all the way through. You'll be redoing it a few times, but that's it. <laughs> Please join with me in the prayer of reconciliation. God of love, we confess that we are sometimes impatient and unkind. We are quick to be jealous and sometimes resentful. We can be rude and we do not always think of how our words will be felt or heard. Loving God, teach us to love. God of love. We confess that too often we put ourselves first. We turn away from others. We turn away from others and we would rather not be asked to sacrifice. We hesitate to raise our voice when we see that harm is being done. We fail to ask others to hear the voice of of another who is quiet or unseen. Loving God, teach us to love. When we are tempted to judge, to assume the worst, may love remind us to trust. When we are tempted to despair, to assume all is lost, may love remind us to hope. When we are tempted to give up, to assume it will never happen, May love remind us to persevere. God's words of assurance. Take comfort that God forgives us and stays by us in the days and in the nights, even when we feel so alone. Yes, Know that the God of love is with us, even closer than we think. Know that the God of peace will help us to find the words to connect with others. Amen. Our next song is colloquially known as the Love Canon, and I invite us to sing this through three times.
Today's scripture reading is Mark 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Good morning. Please pray with me. May your word come through my words. May your love in this message show through. May your strength give us all hope and energy to reach up to you and out to each other every day. Amen. Today was a bit of a soft lob to provide this message. I mean, it's Valentine's Day and there's so much room to move around in it. And right now, isn't that what we all want to receive is a message of love. Don't we want to be drawn near, nearer to our loved ones, to God? There's a warming that happens in our heart and our soul when we draw close, when we draw near, when we hug, and it's so different now. The song Day by Day um, from the music Godspell in 1972 is based on an old Episcopalian hymn. And it's been my earworm as I've been thinking about the message to share um, about Valentine's Day and even about the transfiguration. And unfortunately, we can't play that music if we're sharing it on Zoom. Um, as it's protected, but the words I think a lot of you do know. Um, day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. And it's catchy and it's modern and it's a bit shorter than the hymn that's in the hymnal books, but it, draws attention again to that idea of closeness and distance. What is nearby these days? What is it in the context of our faith and of our relationship to God? Do we find it on Sunday mornings here together? Do we feel nearer? Are we finding it as we make bread or breakfast? in the rites of washing, whether it's a bath or a shower, that it's like a baptism. Do we think of those moments and our relationship in God as we've slowed down? And what is it to be near or nearer those who we know and don't know? And for that, I thought, think of it again with the same verse, day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray, to see my world more clearly, love it more dearly, walk in communion with it more nearly day by day. So the connection that we have has changed a lot. We no longer can just go and get together and sit down to break bread at a common physical table indoors, or to go gather for a community project or a home project. We don't just jump in the car on a bus or a bike and go where we want to be. 
We definitely don't go without taking a mask and remembering to distance, to wash our hands. And even the words physical and social distancing are new in our vocabulary. If anything in the past, we tried to respect each other's space, that personal space. We didn't want to intrude or impose ourselves or stick our nose into areas that really aren't our business. We had made a distance with each other, respectfully, but sometimes in a way that kept us apart. And if we looked at the broader world, it's hard to know how close to get. I mean, it's so large. How do we involve ourselves and not get pulled into everything or nothing? But now we come together in technology, the internet, FaceTime, Skype, yes, here on Zoom. We invite each other's into our homes. Here I am in my kitchen. We can see each other. We hear each voice and we have an opportunity to listen. When women's retreat was planned for this year, I think many of us didn't hold a lot of hope that we would have that same feeling that we have when we gather out at Pilgrim Furs, whether it's walking around the lake, sitting by the fireplace in our pajamas, at the dining table, singing the um, blessing with the youth that are out there. Um, having a glass of tea, coffee, or wine in the evening as we crafted. But we did. It was really amazing. We felt a presence of warmth and comfort with each other on Zoom. On Zoom, you have to pause to have a conversation. Talking over each other just doesn't work. It's noise. It's distortion. And when we pause, we listen. We listen for the words, what is shared, and when it is our time, we have had time to think about we, what we heard before and to weave together with each other. And in that slowing down and in that weaving, I believe the spirit came through. And so it does at worship, at family visits, it becomes warm. We hear more clearly, we love more dearly. We walk with each other and follow God more nearly in a different way, but a new way. The same for this worship service. In this screen, there are laughs and tears, pets, children, close in. We can see each other's face and we give each other the grace when we mute or don't mute in the humanity of the moments as we share this precious time to worship and to come together. And so I hope that when this time changes and when we don't need to meet on Zoom or distantly, that we take away from this time some of what we've experienced to build our new ways of relating with each other, the way that we can slow down to let the spirit in, to hear each other, that we pause and give grace, that we open up to ideas that we can connect in new ways, that cards and letters are still special and worth connecting with those who are not nearby. Kevin shared a prayer last May by Nadia Boltz Weber from her blog, The Corners. It dealt with finding connection in our faith in the everyday things we do. I went to that blog again yesterday and read the comments that had been added since last May. And again, she brought forward and others did too, the ways that we can connect with our faith, with our God, with each other. Breaking bread with morning toast or a picnic, the recalling of family in favorite meals or dishes, when we're in our garden and looking at daffodils who came up before the snow, um, digging in dirt, walking in nature, the doing of dishes, a song that brings a friend or family member to mind or a hope that we hold for the world, a book that reminds us of our journey, our teachers, the Bible stories, 
our story. We move near and near, close and closer. Those ahas help us to find each other, what it is and what we love, what is now and what we need to find to find our way to God and to each other in the future. Yes, even in the transfiguration, after being on the mountain, they wanted to have a shelter, but they came back down the mountain to live, to connect, to walk together with Jesus and to teach and to learn day by day, day by day. Oh, dear Lord, three things we pray to see you more clearly, to love our neighbor, our world more dearly, to follow thee and walk with all more nearly day by day. Amen. We respond together by singing, Here I Am, Lord. Please join me. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin. stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send, here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard
We come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns, and I will pause the recording here. Please join me as we read together the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we have any time for announcements, on the second Sunday of the month, we traditionally sing happy birthday to all those who have birthdays in this month, and that is for us today, Alice and Steve. So please join me in singing to them. Happy birthday to you. Amy emailed me yesterday and mentioned uh, or sent along an email saying that they are desperately needing volunteers for the Burien Cold Weather Shelter, and it included this kind of gobbledygook link. So rather than you have to memorize that, I'm going to put it now in the chat box so that anybody who is interested and available to volunteer, uh, you can copy that link directly from the chat box, and that'll take you to a sign-up sheet. Uh, they need, like I said, volunteers, servers, cleaners, but also it looks like they need uh, more food donations and other goods. So if you're able to uh, everything will be up on that website there. Are there other announcements this morning? Crickets. <laughs> going once, going twice, all right. Oh, Alice, pardon me, I didn't see your hand. Uh, just the, um, the wake uh, for... Um... Rose Hall will be next Sunday at 2. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And there will be a link coming out for, for that. Um, and I believe that we'll be collecting photos, but I think we'll get more communication about that later on. But if anybody has photos of Rose, um, please send them in. All right, with that, we will respond to all of our continued generosity of the church, and especially from last week by singing together our offertory response. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God for all. God blesses and strengthens each of us, not through force, but with wondrous love that fills our hearts, minds, and souls. God calls us and invites us to let our ears and eyes hear and see the word more clearly, learn to love God more dearly, and prepare to follow his path more nearly. That same God sends us out to see our world around us, to love all creation, and to walk with each other more nearly. Day after day, night after night. So now we're called to go. It is time. Amen. We close together by singing, Let Love Go Forward. Let love go forward from this time and place. Shine its healing light in a gentle embrace. Let love go forward from this place and time. Let love shine. 
Let love go forward from this friendly place. Shine its healing light in a gentle embrace. Let love go forward from this place and time. Let love shine. Thank you, everyone, for coming to worship. You're welcome to stick around, and, and we'll leave everything open, and hope you all get a chance to go out and play in the snow today. <laughs>